So I'm back here again with Nate Brown. Last time I connected with him was uh, 11 months ago, and uh, he was in Tennessee back then working at UL. I believe he's still in Tennessee now, but he is Chief Experience Officer at Officium Labs, which he's going to tell me what that actually is. And uh, I did see he just recently held his first bed talk. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was pretty clever. And I, it sounds I, a little I, weird when you say it that way, but yes, it is. <laughs> it starts off a little weird there too. And maybe I'll put a link down in the in the comments in fact, awesome. the video there. Uh, but he came on to my three questions a year ago and and shot it out. I appreciate you coming back here, Ned. Could you, uh, Nate? Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit what is Officium Labs? Sure. Well, thank you, Andrew, for having me back. Had a ball with you last year. Excited to to join you here in 2020. Although, what a year! My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man don't, don't know up uh, or down we'll see holy man we're doing but, well. uh, yeah ul um actually came out of there in january and joined officium labs in january as their chief experience officer and have loved it it's been so interesting coming into a startup environment from a very large uh, twelve thousand person organization that's 150 years old yeah. into a, a brand new startup with with a brilliant leader and a great set of products. And I mean, we just, we just have a lot of fun. I mean, we're, we are the best consultants around customer experience for player experience for video game companies and entertainment companies. Okay. And we're doing player journey mapping. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing all kinds of transformation consulting and correlating CSAT to, to customer lifetime value or player lifetime value. And player it's just been really fun value. and fascinating. Okay. That's, that's a new version of it, player lifetime value. Yeah, there's a whole player experience uh, okay. world out there, and it's awesome. Okay. And you you started with them at the beginning of the year? Was it the end of last year? No, it was the beginning of this year. So it's beginning been four months. Oh, you jumped into a startup at a really interesting time. I did, didn't I? <laughs> Luckily. But, but, but if, it's, if, it's, if it's working on the the player, the gamer experience, I've got yep. to guess if I'm looking, you know, I'm seeing all the articles like you are, I'm sure about how many people are streaming, whether it's videos or whatever it is there. I've got to guess gaming is, is not suffering right now. Gaming is not suffering. They were doing very well prior to pandemic. They're doing very well inside of the pandemic and the video game space will continue to explode as esports explodes. Yeah. As we have a cultural revolution around uh, social video games and communities being formed digitally inside of video games, it's only going to continue to explode. All right. Well, you're sounding really excited about your, your move from the big monster company down to the, the nimble, uh, we move on a dime startup there. Both I've have asked, been good, yeah. but I, I feel like in a way I was kind of created for a startup environment and I, I feel like I've been thriving in it and I'm just excited to keep dreaming and and doing fun stuff and, and making a difference out here. Well, that's great. So I, I pinged you on LinkedIn earlier this week or at the end of last week because uh, working in the contact center world like I do uh, as a supplier, um, we've got thousands, tens of thousands, I think it's 190,000 people have moved around the world from working in offices and cubicles, answering you know customers' uh, inquiries and phone mm. calls, emails and the rest, and they've all gone home. Some of those in certain parts of the world are coming back. Uh, some of them, uh, some of our customers are telling them that uh, they might not bring them all back. They might let them stay at home. Some of them are asking to stay at home. One of the big challenges they have, and and you'll know this from from previous uh, jobs that you've had, is the typical huddle of a supervisor's team and their teammates in a in a contact center environment. is It's a very intimate kind of world. It's it's neat when you see when you see those environments there. They've got their motivation pin boards for the team they've got their leaders lists and they they really in a lot of companies it's it's a great environment for them to work with and for the team leaders and managers of that uh, they run around and they've got their ribbons and they hand out pins it's it's fun if you've never seen that kind of environment uh it's it's energizing but it might not be a lot of them out there right now so my question to you was what kind of experience have you seen uh, if you had yourself uh, techniques practices, tools, tips you might have for people trying to manage employees. In my world, contact center doesn't have to, but employees who you don't see anymore. And I just wanted to see what your, what your thoughts are. Yeah, that's a great question, Andrew. It's a question a lot of people are asking. You know, it's funny to me. I, I think this is a great thing for the customer service space. I honestly right. do. I mean, we, we were already in a transformation before this towards uh, th this amazing capability 
to source customer service talent from all over the world and, and associate them to the need with the best brands, the best organizations. But we were, we were bound to these geographic locations. And now the acceleration that has happened of contact center leaders to make it possible right. for people to work from home and to do this great work from wherever they're going to be the happiest uh, it, it's going to make the work better for people. It, it's going to bring a, a harmony to okay. that work-life balance that, that has not been there in the past. And you, you talk about a really fun contact center environment, and there are those out there. But for every one really great contact center office culture, you've probably got 20, 25 that are a soul-sucking leviathan oh. of pain. And uh, it's, it's, just, it's generally a sad environment in a contact center. You know, those leaders that, that are able to create a really great culture and a great dynamic in an office uh, are special. That is a special thing. And if you're in that situation, be, be proud of that and know how special that is. Okay. Um, you know, in ICMI, you know, I've been working through ICMI for years trying to encourage right. that type of environment and that type of culture, but it's just hard to do. So I, I actually think that this challenge and this opportunity for us to transfer to more of a work from home situation well, it's difficult. If, if it's done well, I, I actually think it will be better in the long run, both for the companies that are trying to source the best talent and for the people doing this work. So I've had, I have one customer, sorry, just to jut in there, uh, here in Germany, it's a very traditional um, uh, industry, um, uh, probably older than your 145 year old previous employer. Um, and they sent <laughs> 1700 of their uh, employees in the, in the customer care center home, obviously, because they had to shut down the, the, the four buildings they had across the country. And, and they were sure a week ago Friday, a week ago Friday, the update was that they're going to be working really hard to set up new work areas and bring them back in and, mm. and get everything. By Monday, this, this past Monday, uh, they came to us and said, you know what, we, we're going to keep a whole lot of them at home. Uh, we're looking at the statistics and the reports and yeah. the efficiencies are actually higher for those that are now working at home than those working in the office place. Ta-da, not a I surprise to a lot of us. Play. <laughs> <laughs> that plays right into to what you're saying, right? Yeah, it does. I mean, there, there is, you can create a phenomenal in-person culture environment in the office. And, and it's going to be hard if, if you do have that special phenomenal environment, it's going to be hard to replicate that exactly with a remote team. But what I'm saying is that you can have a really good and a really strong remote team mm. that is going to be even better than most of the, the physical offices that are out there. So how, how, you, you how do we do that? You, you worked yeah. in an office uh, at UL. So you were part of the corporate, uh, corporate uh, uh, building and all that there. Yeah, 12 Yours, years. Yeah. Officium is, is, as I can tell, is headquartered in, in Silicon Valley. It's out in San Francisco, right? You're still in Tennessee. I'm guessing the team here is pretty, pretty diverse themselves as far as oh, locations yeah. go. Oh, it's all over the place. So we, we work from our homes when we're not on the road with clients. Okay. Uh, which is which is great. You know, you kind of have that that excitement of being on site and the energy that comes from being on site with our with our clients. And then when we're at home, we have the pleasure of relaxing a little bit more and being with our family a little bit more and getting some of that work done that's really hard to do when you're on the road. <laughs> so I'm, he I'm hearing that from some people that they're not having the commute, even if it's the daily commute of 45 oh. minutes or an hour and a half in and out of the office, they suddenly find they have extra time on their hands to, to do nice things and all. But if you, if, you're, if you travel, I know like you, and I've, I typically do where you're spending many hours a week uh, or half a day is trying to get from one place through connections to the airports. Uh, this, this is actually a really nice time that we're going through now, but some of those managing people that you don't see, that you don't have. Have you got any, any, any ideas or techniques or tips that you, you've got on that? Yeah, and I, I worked with some friends of mine and in the, in the folks at Officium, and we put together a, a list of ideas that are very helpful to managing a remote team and keeping okay. that energy alive. Let me, let me set a little bit of a, a macro stage before I dive into some, some very specific ideas. And um, I was really overcome recently by a talk by Simon Sinek, uh, one of his TED Talks, mm -hmm. where um, he, he just talks about creating this circle of safety inside of your team, okay. regardless of, of geography, wherever that team is. And I think right now, you know, it's essential that our, our people can trust us 
and that we're, we're making them feel as safe as possible during this time and bringing them life and energy as, as much as we possibly can. And that's going to require some really great leadership. Mm. Uh, it, it's going to require a, a, just a level of transparency that, that's there because uh, we can't promise that we know everything that's going to happen in the, in these, these coming months. Right. Uh, but the things that we can promise we should, and we should stand by those promises and the things that we can't, we should be as honest as, as we possibly can and, and help to guide people emotionally through the, this period of time. Hmm. Otherwise uh, it's really easy for people doing this work that are maybe stuck in their homes now or they haven't before they're trying to transition to this new environment. Maybe they're having to homeschool their kids. Right. Or something that they've never had to do before, and they're and they're trying to do the best job that they can, but it, but they might not have the emotional bandwidth to to really invest themselves in, into doing that work well. And if we don't have that circle of safety around us, gotcha. we can't apply our energy and our mind to our job because we're just going to be trying to create that circle of safety for ourselves. Right. <laughs> so the more the leader can create that circle of safety around their people the more their people can actually focus on their work right. and serve customers well. Okay. Otherwise, that, that burden comes on the individual. So it's really critical in my mind, Andrew. I mean, we just have to be thinking through, how can I protect this person? How can I help to lead them and guide them through this challenging time and extend as much grace as possible? Does that... Does that... Going back to what you said, that the, I think you say soul-sucking uh, environments of these uh, contact center offices, is that, is that just the, the example of the opposite, where that circle of safety just often in those environments don't really exist? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to not have them exist. Because, I mean, if we're going to serve customers well, there are SLAs, there, are, there is a reality there. But let's look at the tenets of a legacy contact center environment. Mm. Adherence to schedule. Yeah. Quality assurance. Uh, extended forms and expectations and SLAs that have to be met. These are things that if, if you're trying to put that same burden and that same reality on somebody that's now in a very challenging situation in their home where they're trying to adapt to a new worldwide reality, it's going to break them. <laughs> so we do have to find a way to ease that pressure some adherence to schedule and quality. That's going to have to look a little bit different. Than it would before. So how how do how do how do, how does a company manage? I mean, inheritance the schedule, um, and and that's a religion for certain uh, roles in oh, in, yeah. these, in these larger companies, and they run around with their their digital clipboards and measure off every every person's every, extra thirty seconds at the coffee machine that they didn't come back and and plug in their uh, to take the call. But how do how do we how do we manage that and the expectation of the customer when the people how, how does it work with with a, a an employee who's at home? You can't see. You can monitor yeah. them. You can tell that they're they're logged into a system. That they're in a certain status. You can you can you might even have some screen tracking software running. Some do that, so you can see which screens are active and not what they're doing on the screens, but just to make sure they're they're actually there working. Um, how does how does a, a a team leader communicate with their team members in in a scenario like that? It's going to come down to do you trust your people or not? Yeah. And if you've hired good people that represent your brand culture and represent the type of environment that you're looking to create, they're going to do right by you if you give them the opportunity mm. to, do, to do right. Uh, you know, I'll give you the example of, of the adherence to schedule thing. You've got the employee that they themselves are just all about minutes and they think in terms of minutes. I, I have to give X number of minutes to my company. Yeah. And if they take minutes from me here, I'm going to take them back here versus somebody that loves the work they're doing and respects the company that they work for. The, the idea of minute counting goes away. And, and if they have to help take care of their kid in the morning for a little while, they're going to give you that time back and more at the end of the day. They're going to do the right thing. And if you don't have people like that, then you need to find people like that. Otherwise, you can't manage them in this work from home reality. It, it's going to be impossible to create that atmosphere of trust and mutual respect unless you have people that have the capacity and ability to think that way. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of people, and many of them, sadly, in the past have worked in the contact center that are not made for this new reality. <laughs> 
the good news is there's a great new generation of people out there that are exactly in this frame of mind and that are looking for good, compelling work where they can serve customers and serve a company that they respect and that they want to be there for. And, and we can stop babysitting people mm -hmm. and stop managing basic expectations and start guiding the hearts and minds of our people in a way that's going to be meaningful and, and compelling. And they, and they don't now have to move to Omaha or Kansas City where these monster centers have been built geographically in the middle of the U.S. and things like that. They yeah, can we, we literally throw. put call centers in the desert. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like. And then expect 600 people to move out there and work there and be motivated every day. So Which if, if, you, if you're Zappos, it happens, but anybody else can't get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I hear you saying is it, it's not about the technology. Uh, that's that uh, the technology and, and, and numbers, you know, if, if I was taught at the beginning of my call center world when I was designing contact centers back in the 90s, uh, I would come up with these fantastic ideas of diverse uh, geographically separated centers connected together. Uh, and I had a, a mentor back then. Um, he was actually a customer, but he was he was teaching me how to do my job. It's pretty pretty green behind <laughs> ears then. Uh, he said, "This is already great what you've created here, uh, Andrew. But if you can't measure it, it's not worth building it, right?" And that's 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 the way it, the way it is. And what the measures might be can differ depending on what types of things you're you're building there. Uh, sure. From the business perspective, you've got to be able to show some sort of result, whether that's at the bottom of a, of a of a spreadsheet. Uh, yeah. Or, or it's a smiling, happy customer leaving your 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 company with uh, with products or services that they've consumed. We've put a whole lot, and I, we've talked about this last year on on the on the interview. Uh, we've put a whole lot of technology between people and servicing their customers. We've I'm I'm part of that. Uh, I'm proud of a lot of what we've done, but we've put a whole lot of pieces and a whole lot of hurdles in between them. And and what I hear you saying is, if you have the right people that have the right culture, trust. The circle was it the circle of trust around them where they feel comfortable of taking an extra 90 seconds to go reheat the formula for the bait whatever it is there and then they come back and log on and take the next six calls uh without blinking an eye and servicing the customer well um this can all work out really well is that right yeah some some companies can't make that mental shift some people can't make that mental shift so we need to marry those organizations that want to hang on to the legacy contact center environment. We need, we need to let them find all the people that think in terms of manage me by the minute, mm. tell me exactly what I'm supposed to do and when, when to do it. And I will do my best to adhere to your quality form and to your by the minute schedule for the rest of us <laughs> that are creating a, a little bit different of a type of organization and a different feel. There needs to be guide rails, Andrew, and, and you are correct. I mean, you can't, you're not going to care about what you can't measure. And, and there can be abuses that would happen here. You have lazy people. You have some people that want to take advantage of your company. So, I mean, we have to be able to identify when that's going on. And, and again, there's a cultural mismatch that's happening there. there. There's a lack of respect that's coming from that employee back to the company. Um, but I mean, think about some of the technologies that we have now. I mean, you can know when an agent's doing a good job for the customer. Sure. At the end of the day, that's what's really mattering here is, are they creating great customer interactions and are they, are they creating a good environment for their team as well? Mm. Because mm. you can be a whip crack customer service person who makes magic on every customer interaction, but if you treat your coworkers like crap, you're not gonna be on my team. Right. Because you will cause way more harm than good uh, in that scenario. So you got to have people that can serve their coworkers well and the customer well, and, and then have some guide rails that are there. But I mean, you're going to know these things if, if you have the right technologies in place. I'll give you the example of modern customer sentiment mm. capabilities where they can take recorded calls, they can take emails, they can take live chats and get a very accurate automated picture of customer sentiment like that. Exactly. It's no longer built on surveys that could be gamed or mm. other things. I mean, we have a, a, an unbiased, very intelligent AI capability that's monitor, monitoring the customer sentiment of all these different customer service interactions. We can know if that agent is creating great customer service interactions better and more clearly than we ever could in the past. So what about those employee interactions? Well, I mean, if we have a good employee pulse survey system that's out there, 
and we're doing as much to capture the voice of our employees mm. as we are the voice of our customers, we're going to know if somebody's ruining the energy and harmony of our team. It's going to come out. <laughs> and, and, and we have to deal with that and be intentional about that. Uh, there's a, a quote that I used to love that A players don't play with C players for long. <laughs> if you let C players sit around on your team, the cost, the cost of that is your A players. They yeah. will leave. They will not tolerate you allowing C players to sit there mm. and cannibalize the, the positive energy of your team. They will go find a better team. So if you want to have a team of A players, you got to let those C players find somewhere else to be. You see a real opportunity here through all of this. I, I, I was on a, a management call this, this week where one of our directors, uh, she, she just mentioned, I'm not sure if she picked it up from somewhere else, uh, but she says what, what we as an industry uh, in communication technologies, what we've not been able to do in 10 years, this virus has done in the last four weeks. I love that. <laughs> That's brilliant. I need to make a T-shirt with that because that's that that is that is what's happened, right? So this oh, the yeah. things that I know you have been looking at for a long time. I've been trying to, I've been preaching uh, and doing my evangelizing of why why don't we take advantage of some of the technology, some of the methods that are out there, uh, instead of doing the same old same old because we've done it. You see a real opportunity uh, here, that, yeah. and I I I I, pre I, I don't know, predict is maybe not the right word. Um, that a lot of these people that have gone home, and this, this is not only with contact center agents, there's going to be a lot of office workers. Many of them are not going to come back to the office really anytime soon because they have health questions, family member, whatever it might be, until oh, yeah. this world sort of settles down, whenever that might be, they're going to want to either work differently, uh, remotely, or partial desk sharing, you know, or office sharing, or whatever it might be, or they might not come back again. And they might say, I don't want to work this way. And this may be this opportunity you're talking about that we've got a lot of people out there that are, need work and will be wanting to work and don't need to go to Silicon Valley, Omaha, wherever it might be to go do that work. And they can do it uh, in, a, in, a, in a space that they feel comfortable, safe uh, as well in. Yep. We have ripped the Band-Aid off. <laughs> and this is something that I think people have just been scared of and intimidated Good. of. And yeah. there was different little sticking points around security and how are, how are these agents going to have a monitor to use this tool? And, you know, but all these, all these barriers kind of magically this very quickly uh, were either dealt with or just kind of disappeared. And so now, I mean, yeah, the bandaid is off and we don't need to put it back on. Wow, I really appreciate it, and I know I've taken a bit of your your morning here, and because I'll I'll be completely honest, I was on the wrong connection link for this video interview uh, with <laughs> Nate while he was on a completely different platform. All my fault, but I've got to figure out how to use some of these modern tools myself. I clicked I the wrong link, Andrew. That's very gracious of you to to blame I, yourself. I shouldn't send you multiple links. <laughs> But I'd like to say you are going to be my premiere episode on my revival of my CX404 podcast, uh, which I started seven years ago, highlighting some of the errors that people keep making in customer experiences. Uh, this new segment or new phase of my podcast is going to be called The New Normal. Uh, it's a show about adjusting to new ways of work communications and designing great experiences. And I'm really happy to have Nate here to, to kick this one off for me. Nate, tell the people here where they can learn more about Officium and yourself. Where can they connect with you? Yeah, uh, definitely uh, pop on over to officiumlabs.io. And we work with video game companies and anybody um, that wants to accelerate their customer experience results. And would love for you also to join CX Accelerator. We have a, an amazing virtual community of CX pros out there, just incredibly encouraging and organic with that community to, to helping equip you in your career as a customer service CX professional. Uh, I did not get to Andrew, my list of ideas. Um, oh, no. so if, if you could put in the show notes, I, I, we did collect uh, eight really fun ideas to create virtual engagement on your team. I, I would love for you to share that, uh, that resource with your people, if you wouldn't mind. Send it over to uh, me. We'll put it in yeah. there. Perfect. But no, I, uh, it was a pleasure hanging out with you, Andrew. Thank you for the opportunity.
Thank you. And to the two bearded guys here, uh, appreciate it. In these interesting times we have, it is summer, at least in our hemisphere here, and that's it's a nice thing to look forward to. Nate, take care of yourself. Be safe. Keep the energy uh, in the CX world uh, going as you always do. And uh, at some point, I want to see that next wrestling belt hanging on oh, yeah. behind you. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> Thank you for being here today, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, everybody.